Hey everyone, Sir Term here again. And today I bring you some Soro Sandy gameplay. Now, with Opio 6 coming out on March 15th, we're also getting the release of Static Deck 12. So that's another new leader that we're getting with technically OP6 release as well, right? So that's seven leaders that we're gonna have in this new meta. So obviously I needed to showcase that. So over the next three days, we're gonna be playing some games of Soro Sandy. And unfortunately, this feels a lot like Uta and a lot like Hori. It's just not strong enough. It's like it's missing something. It's missing something to really make this powerful. But if you don't know what this leader does, it's a dual color leader, so green and blue, Soro and Sanji. And you can put it down in your leader, and when you attack, you can restand. You, you have to bounce back one of your other units and restand a different unit that has 7k power or less. So obviously the power of this leader is the fact that you're able to kind of restand some of your very, pow very powerful attack effect cards, right? Like something like Seth here that lets you kind of summon one of your two cost characters anytime you attack can be pretty cool. Something like Soro here that lets you rest one of your opponent's characters can get a lot of value from attacking twice. So that, that's what we have to work with here. Now, there's a lot of variations on how to build this, this leader. I kind of went with a two cost unit approach, right? So with the static deck 12, we get this, these cards that kind of have some effects related to summoning two cost units for free. We get stuff like Ibanka, right? So Ibanka is a three mana, three, three down card that when you play it, you can reveal the top card of your deck and you can play that card if it has a two cost, if it's two cost. It has to be exactly two cost, cannot be less, cannot be more. So cards like this, Cards like Seth and even the Parash Shot, which is an event, a counter event that you can play it on your opponent's attack and lets you summon again a two cost card from the top of your deck, makes me want to go for like this two cost approach. And that's why you kind of have this deck that has a lot of two cost units, right? So the main engines that can summon these cards are going to be Ivankov and Seth. Ivankov just does one of them and then lets you start drawing if you have less than six cards. Do remember that Ivankov is once per turn for him to draw. So attacking twice with Ivankov usually is not worth it using your leader ability. Usually you just attack one and you probably have something else better. Your Seth can rearrange the top of your deck, right? Because that's another thing that this deck has. It's a lot of rearranging the top of your deck so that you can actually guarantee that you get that two cost card when you need it to get value from it. So Seth lets you rearrange the top of your deck. And then when you attack with Seth, you get to summon a, a two cost card if it's on the top. So then the idea here is that you put two down on Seth, summon a two cost card, attack with your leader. You can bounce that two cost card that you just summon back to your hand, restand the Seth, attack again, and summon another two cost card on top of it. So you end up kind of getting all this value from attacking twice with your Seth, right? And then of course, the Parasha, it's a one mana bank and lets you summon it. So we have our engines here that lets us summon the two cost cards. And then together with Seth, we play stuff like Usopp here, which lets us look at the top five cards of our deck and place them in any order. So the Usopp, the Seth, and then the Dubal, lets us also rearrange the top cards so that we can guarantee again that we have those two cost cards for the Ivanka or the Seth. Not only that, but they're also two cost cards themselves, so they can also get summoned by those cards as well. Then we just have like a bunch of other two cost cards to kind of fill up the rest of the deck, right? So Shopper is really just there as a 2k counter, but can be useful in certain situations if you attack with him to rest an opponent's cheap blocker. Uh, you have your Law, and the Law can be kind of cool because the Law you can summon it with a uh, with the Mihawk, or you can, if you have the Law on the field, you can bring the Law back to your hand for one down and be able to summon your Ivankov or summon another Mihawk, right? So the Law can also have some uses there. Sugar is also nice because it lets you rest one of your opponent's blockers for costs or less, right? Or any one of their units. Now, remember that you can only use the play effect for Sugar, right? The other effect requires you to have a, a Don Quixote leader, which we don't have. But it's still just there to just kind of let us rest an opponent's blocker, allowing us to push damage and push through to the opponent's defenses. Rosinante is nice because it's a two-cost blocker. And even if you play him rested with Seth, you still get the Rosinante ability, which means that you can protect one of your other units that's rested, right? So it's been pretty nice there. And uh, then we have this Pudding, right? Which is just going to be another 2-drop, another 2k counter. Uh, the good thing about the Pudding is that even if you summon her with Seth, rested, you can just bounce her back to your hand. 
before the end of the turn. So it pretty much is like Seth just drew you a 2k counter to your hand, right? Uh, and then this is the one that's the most important one, and it's Sanji. So Sanji is a two cost unit, and that also comes from the start of the 12. When you put one down on Sanji and you attack with him and you have less than five cards, he gets plus 2k. And guess what? When you go ahead and then restand it with your leader ability and attack again with Sanji, he gets on another 2k. Which means that you can put two down on the Sanji and you have a 7k attack. And then when you restand there with your leader and attack again, it now becomes a 9k attack. So this Sanji is one of the ways that we try to finish up a lot of games. And again, it's probably one of the most important cards in this deck. So that's our two drops. That's our engines. So what is filling up the rest of the deck, right? So we have Mihawk, Soro, and Usa. The Mihawk is there because it's, this Soro is really powerful. So sometimes you can get this Mihawk into Soro combo, and it can also be another target for your law if you want to bounce your law back to your hand. And also, it's just a 2K counter. So it's just an additional 2K counter that we can play. Uh, the Soro is one of the more powerful cards in this deck as well. The only reason we're only playing three of is because it doesn't have any counters, right? And sometimes it can be kind of awkward to, to develop this Soro. But the Sorrow can let you rest one of your opponent's characters, six costs or less. So this can rest even stuff like Sabo, which tends to not be able to be rested by something like Sugar. And you can attack with him twice using your leader abilities. You can put one down on him, he goes to 7k, you rest an, you rest an opponent's character, you restand it with your leader, and attack again, and you can rest another character, for example, right? So that's why it's here. And then lastly, we do play one of Usopp. I think this deck list specifically wants to be really aggressive, but sometimes... It's awkward when your opponent is able to remove your whole board and you don't have any other units to be able to reach them with your Soro and Sanji. This lets us be able to play uh, the Usopp and we have the Rush on it. We can give it two down, attack for seven, play another two drop, and then be attacking with our Sanji for seven, bounce that two drop that we just play, and attack with Usopp again for another seven, right? So it can be pretty powerful when the opponent doesn't expect you to have a Rush card to kind of finish up the game. And that's the deck list, right? It's a lot of really cool combos. Again, the most important part here are the Ivanko and the Seth. So that's usually what I'm trying to mulligan for most of the times. If you get the Mihawk into Soro combo for turn three, you probably can keep that as well because that can put a lot of pressure into the opponent. But for the most part, playing Ivanko, playing Seth, allowing you to cheat out your two costs for free, and Ivanko allowing you to draw can be really impactful at making yourself sure that you don't run out of resources. Uh, aside from that, the biggest thing I have to I have to say is that really be careful about your done. All right, you're gonna see me throughout the videos today and over the next two days kind of making some misplays because I'm still getting used to this deck myself. But there's a lot of cool combos that you can do as long as you keep track of how much time you need because you're always going to need a down for your Sora to be able to restand. You're always going to have to have an extra unit that you can bounce back to your hand, etc., etc. So, yeah, hope you enjoy my take on the Sora Sandy leader. I don't think it's strong, unfortunately, but it can have some pretty cool matchups. And today we're going to see three games against Karakuri uh, to kind of showcase some of the pressure that we can put in just because of how many units we can summon and how powerful being able to attack twice with some of them can be. So hope you enjoy these games. And if you do, make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us. We post One Piece videos every single day. We have three videos with this deck over the next couple, over the next three days. And then we'll move on to some other OP sets deck list. So hope you enjoy the games. In this match, we're going against Katakuri. Honestly, I don't dislike this, right? Because I feel like we have a lot of aggression i think i want to look for my Seth, my banka we get it we also get the mihawk into soro combo so we can just do that right away on on turn three so again well like i mentioned just putting a lot of pressure uh yeah i think i prefer this i think i prefer this let the opponent try to kill this soro they can go to seven we have a 2k counter so we can go to eight i would like to not use my ibanka by myself to counter if i can yeah, if they only go for seven, then it is an easy 2k. Cool. Uh, question here is... Okay, well, that's easy, right? Because then we can just attack here. So we attack for seven. We can play Ivankov. We can attack for seven. We have just enough to go like this, right? Yeah, we can go and rest this. Kill that with the Mihawk. I guess I get punished by a Thunderbolt here. Okay, they just... Wow, they discarded already with a Maru. Interesting. 
We'll go like this. Right? Uh, we we, well, we want to bounce back. I guess we don't have to bounce back the, the uh, Mihawk. Let's see what we get here first. All right, we didn't get anything special, so let's... Uh, hmm. I guess we can leave it on the top, to be honest. I feel like this Soul is putting a lot of pressure. What I can do here is that I can just grab the Ivanka back then. And attack for seven. I like grabbing the Ivanka back over the Mihawk. I guess the downside, I mean, I do have another 2k counter. We know we're going to get a Soro next turn, right? So we can just, I guess we should probably just put it to the bottom because I don't think I need a third Soro right now. They don't, they, they don't like this guy. They really don't like this guy. All right. What I can do now, I guess, is that I could bounce back this Mihawk. I can also just play Seth. Mm, I want to I wanna develop Sorrow. I want to develop Sorrow. But I also want to develop Seth. Interesting. Let's go here first. Let's send this to the bottom. And uh, we'll go for 5. And we'll go for 6. Uh, we'll, go, we'll play the Sorrow out. Just set up for like a better attack later. I, I, I am kind of worried about like random Yamatos. Obviously the tank costs big most, so I can start coming up soon. If the opponent bottom decks this, I think that's not the worst thing out there. Uh, probably can give them one of these saps, right? Mm, yeah, let's go like this. So we, we want to bounce back this Mihawk, right? We want to bounce back this Mayhawk. So what we can do is that we can go here first. Attack with Mayhawk. We're going to get both of these back. I guess do I want to attack with the Vankov? So we have enough done to play this two cards. I guess not because we're going to go here, right? Five. Then we're going to bounce back the Mayhawk and replay it for three. So I guess we're not going to use this ability, right? So we're just going to attack for 5 here. Oh wait, that doesn't work because I'm going to have another character. I'm going to have the Ivanka, so I actually cannot... You know, I messed up. I cannot get the, the thing back, right? Even if I bounce back the Mihawk. Yeah, even if I bounce back the Mihawk, it won't work. What I can do now is that I can go Sugar and just attack the Satori. But I feel like that makes me a little bit worse into a lot of things. Because I want to develop this set so I can start getting value on my two drops. At the same time, opponent's going to start playing... Oh, you know what? This is a this is a five cost, right? So we're going to go like this because I'm dumb. We're going to leave that at the top and we're going to get them rested, right? And uh, we're going to go here Attack for five and just get the Mihawk. I did forget about this, right? I guess we can leave this here now as the target that we're going to bounce back. Yeah, there you go. The tank cost. We're going to take a lot of damage here. Uh, we're going to give you the 2k. Then we're going to give you another 2k. And then we're going to let you kill it. All right, cool. So uh, we, we'll have this to bounce back. We know we're going to have... We know what we're going to have on the top, right? Which is going to be this. I wonder if I want to get anything else here. We don't care about the sugar. We can get this guy. I guess it's going to be rested, right? That's the only downside. It's going to be rested. It's going to be rested. Yeah, we'll, we'll still go for it. I guess we can get the 2k back to our hand. That's probably better than getting the sugar back to our hand. So we'll go seven. Ooh, you know, okay, so eight, nine, ten. You know, I'm going to just do this. Yeah, like you know, you knew I was gonna do this, right? 
So I don't understand why he counter out of that. So we'll go here for five. They give me a 1k, so then we go here for 7, and we'll deploy it. Even though it is rested, it does mean that this card uh, can save one of my units from getting KO'd. We have to grant them the life, right? We, we don't want to go that low, because we can actually potentially uh, clear out their board. So here, we can use the car action. Opponent can still go for 9, but they have to give me the 9. Yeah, so this the problem here is that I don't have anything else, right? Like, I don't have a way to kill this Linlin unless I literally go... I guess we can. 10, 11, 12. Is that worth it? Is that worth it? I guess we're going to do that. We should attack. Okay, so we can go 5. And just restand the Mihawk. Yeah, we, we could probably just restand it, right? So 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Force the opponent to give me two cards here. Uh, we're going to bounce back. I guess the sugar makes the most sense. And we'll attack their life one more time. And then we'll be in a situation where we're kind of out of cards because we lost the Seth and they bank off. This was a weird game. I'm still getting used to this deck. You want to pro... Okay, so you want to kill the Mihawk, right? I guess you can just go after my life too. But if I get... Okay, they looked at their own life and left it at the top, so that's kind of scary. That's kind of scary, right? That could be a trigger. That could be a trigger. Hmm. And down to attack for small numbers. And down to attack for five. So, okay. So, if we go seven here, we attack for five again. We still have three for the Mihawk into the Sorrow. Oh, wait. We need a card to actually be able to restand, though, right? Okay, so three sets. We need a car so that we can actually uh, restand the sorrow. So we're going to have to go. We're going to have to just play this out. Um, I probably want to have the blockers, to be honest. Like, I think I need to have the... I want to have the Seth, but I think I need to... Well, I guess we can go ahead and develop the Seth. And just have this come out. Right? So then we attack for six. Then we have three and two for the blocker. The other option could have been to just get rid of the lane lane, to be honest. But I think we just put pressure. Because we're going to develop two units here. Uh, we're going to develop four units, sorry. We're going to go here. Yeah, we're going to go like this. And opponent still has that trigger that they're not showing me. Okay, it was just the life stuff? All right. Oh, it was the Amaru. Wow. Okay, so they're back to two life. But now we just go here. Play the Soro. And play the blocker. We have 4k counter value. I guess opponent can just kill the Soro. But then we're still going to have three attacks to go for. Neko. Okay, so now you have like no cards in your hand. So this makes my attacks even easier. So this makes my attacks easier. Uh, yeah, you're going to have to kill the Sorrow. They can go to 10 here. So two 10 attacks. We can only go up to... T oh, wait. That makes they, mess, they messed up then, right? Doesn't that mean they messed up here? Because I can block here and then just canter out. I think we can actually just slow this down then. Like, I don't think we need to actually... We don't need to actually attack into their life. We can just take it slow. Because we can rest their Neko. I guess we'll have to attack into their life to be able to rest their Neko. Yeah, so we'll have to go like... We'll have to go 8. I could have probably just gone for lethal, right? But I am, I am kind of scared of the triggers. So I want to make sure that um, we kind of beat them. 
if the opponent has any triggers. So we can go for five here. Like I'm down to just play it really slow here. So seven. And uh, we'll bounce back the 2k counter, I think. And now, no matter if this is a, no matter if that was a brulee, we were gonna be able to rest it. Same thing with a Sanji. And there we go. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I, I, I definitely had lethal if I just went all in, but I was very scared of like Nami, Thunderbolt, heck, like, like uh, the other the zero mana spell, right? That could potentially leave them alive and then have them be able to swim back at us. So because we had all the advantage in the world and we know that the opponent has zero cards, I think it's completely safe to just go for board and just play it slow to make sure that we guarantee the victory. And we still ended up finding the lead though because again, we're able to, we were able to kill the big one first. Then when we attack with the Soro for seven, we're able to rest the Nekomamushi. And the opponent took that life because they didn't have any other cards and they didn't hit a trigger. And the moment that they didn't hit a trigger there, we were able to go ahead and kill the Neko and then set up for another seven attack into an AK attack, right? So yeah, I think it was fine to do a slow. And I think this is probably one of our better matchups because Katakuri kind of struggles with us having so many units on the field. And this Soro can just put a lot of work into the opponent, but still some things I need to clean up how I play about this, 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 with this deck. So GG's. In this match, we're going against Katakuri. Um, I'll go second, obviously, to kind of slow down their big mom. We don't have this Soro, but we do have this Sanji, which can be pretty powerful. I am kind of scared of Gadatsu, though. So before we play Sanji, we're going to play Usopp first. He also sets us up to have the Ivanka get us something good, right? So turn two, we play Usopp. Turn, uh, turn one, we play Usopp. Turn two, we play Ivanka. So we go Usopp here. Now we can draw the Seth. And I guess we can make it so that... We could also... Hmm... How do we do this? We got we want to get this slot to be the one that gets summoned, right? I don't think we need Seth just yet, so I think we go like this. I think I'd rather have that Mihawk on my hand. There's a funny thing that we can do next turn. Where we oh, you know we could have trigger Ivank of twice, actually. Yeah, yeah, we could have trigger Ivank of twice. I just saw that, right? Because we were gonna summon the law. So we could have like bounced the law back to our hand and trigger bank up again. No, because we wouldn't need to have the bank up in our hand. No, that wouldn't have worked. That wouldn't have worked. No, no, because that only works if I get to attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right, we'll take this one. This is a nine hit. We're gonna play bank up and we're gonna play, uh, we, and we're gonna have one more dawn, right? The one more dawn could be used for law to get this Mihawk down. I don't know that it's gonna be worth it. Like, I think I'd rather just attack for sits here. Yeah, let's just attack for sits here. We don't use anything. Let the opponent give me a 2k or a card. We just need to spam units, right? I am kind of concerned about Gedatsu being a thing. Yeah, so we'll deploy this, pass the turn. I want to get the Sanji down the sooner the better. So that's a 2k. We need to get to a position where we have a lot of units when we start attacking into their life. Because we have to like aggro them down. And the problem is that the opponent's already on five gone to play Gedatsu. And we haven't taken a single life from them. We know we're gonna get Seth. Do we ever just play Seth instead of trying to go for the attack next turn? Maybe. Like maybe having Seth on the field ends up being better for us. So that we can start spamming a lot of units. Yeah, I think we just develop Seth. We just develop Seth. Opponent has a hard time dealing with Seth. We'll have one down, so we can still attack here for enough damage. I'm down to draw. So I'm down to just give them a 1k and a, two, and a 2k. I, wanna, I probably want to keep this Usopp. Yeah, I probably want to keep this Usopp. I'm down to draw here. We'll give you this, this law. If we go Seth, we can draw with a Vankov. I know we have a two drop on the top, right? The other option here is that we can actually 
bounce the event off to my hand and then play it again with loss with one down. So like we can go like five. No, I think what are we thinking? I think we just go Seth. I think we just go Seth. So we go here, get the draw, get the sugar, that for five again. Um, play our Seth and just chill. Opponent can try to kill the Sibankov, and I'll be okay with that because we're gonna have Seth in the field. We'll have this card just sitting there waiting to start getting value once we start bouncing them. If they have a Thunderbolt or a Nami or something, then that's fine. But having this set, yeah, this dynamic, having this set on the field is so important. Having this out of the way now is better than later. When it goes to seven next turn, Gedatsu does not kill Seth. It can still kill Ivankov. Okay. So then we go like this. Uh, we're going to get that Ivankov in our hand and we're going to play the rest. Oh. So we get the Ivankov in our hand and we get the rest with the Seth attacks. We're going to have eight done. So we can put two on Seth, one on Sanji, that leaves me with five, three for the second Ivankov, that leaves me with two. And I guess we can attack with Uso with the other two or we can play something like Sugar. Or we can start playing the Sanji that I think is going to be... We are going to have a full board, so I guess we can play Rosinante instead. I guess if the opponent kills this, this Ivankov, we don't have a full board. Uh, no, we still will, right? I'm going to tell you what. We want to trash. If the opponent plays 7 cost Big Mom here, we want to trash. Okay, so let's look at that. So, perfect. So, we, again, we're in a situation where we can fill this board. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I, I, see, I see the line. I see the line. So, 2... Three, one, and two for Rosinante. I guess we'll have, yeah, we'll have to go like this first. We'll deploy it. We'll bounce back the, the Rosinante. We can also just, yeah, we can go here. Three, and then two. Again, we just need to have a bunch of units. We just need to have a bunch of units here. And um, that lets me do that. They can kill the pudding if they want to. That saves me an attack that doesn't go into my life. Now, there's a chance that we whiff with Ivankov because we don't know what the next cards are. Unless we just play Usa first and then play... Unless we don't care about the Rosinante. I think I'm going to just play Sanji, actually. When it has nine down, we have two life. We'll have... The problem is that I don't have a lot of two Ks. We can go one, three, four, five, six. We'll go six. So two, three, four, five, six. We can go up to 11. When it has nine down, they can go to... Okay, they, they shouldn't be able to kill us next turn, right? So I think I like going here. I think I like going here. We'll deploy the sugar. Right? And then I actually think we play Sanji. So that we have this big attacker that's going to be like a 9k attacker next turn. Now, if the opponent has Yamato, they can still kill any one of my units except for Seth. But they do not get to heal. When it's still, it's going to have seven, well, six cards plus two more from life. So then we go into eight cards in their hands. So I don't know that we have lethal anyways. Let's see what they do with this life. They left it at the top. Okay, so here they go for seven, right? So they have eight done left. So they can go again, 10. They can go 10 and we can beat the 10. Or we can just counter here and say, okay. Yeah, let's go like this. They're going to just go for the Seth. And I'm okay with them killing the Seth, right? No, they're going to go after my life. Interesting. 
you, there's no way that you can leave this Seth alive. Right? Am I missing something here? They took a life, so they make it even easier. Interesting. Okay. All right. Huh. Yeah. All right. They, I guess they had no other choice, right? They had nothing else? Yeah, they had nothing else, right? Oh, they had a trigger here. They could have actually been okay because they could have... They could have... Um, Stop my sorrow from attacking. So they had the trigger, and then they had two, three, four K counter worth. They could have gone for this and stop my soul, my sorrow from attacking, which meant that we wouldn't have had the restand again, right? So it could have been worse, but yeah, GG's. In this match, we're going against Katakuri. We should be in a decent spot here. I don't like my hand though. I mean, the Senji is really good. And we also have the Sorrow. I'm going to keep it. Usually, I want to look for Ivanka and um, like Ivanka and other stuff, right? But I think I think this is okay, right? We can go. Yeah, like we can go Sanji here and just set it up for later. I guess if the opponent's playing like the that's so going to be a problem. We can play Sorrow. Yeah, opponent's just going to try to play their thing, right? I don't want to take damage early. Let's go here. I want to have this Seth in my hand. If the opponent finds the Nami or the Thunderbolt, I get punished by this attack. But I, I, I do want to develop this Sorrow here. I want to develop Sorrow. Yeah, I just want to go like this and just have either one of these two can attack into the opponent. So even if the opponent has Gadatsu, one of these two will do the job. Okay. I'll take that. I'll block that five and I'll take this seven. They left it at the top. So whatever they have is going to be something that's going to be able to counter me out. Right. So. um, Good thing is that we don't have to attack into their life. Right. The problem here is that this is going to heal them now. Right. This is going to heal them, unfortunately, for us. So I guess we just go like this and just rest the Okiku. Like, do I want to heal them here or do I just let that go? What is the play? I feel like I need to put pressure. And I don't know where the pressure is supposed to come from. What if we just go Seth? Why don't we just go Seth? And we know that the opponent has a trigger here that we haven't seen. I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna let them. Be, I'm gonna let them play that trigger. Whatever it is. Okay. So I'm just gonna go Seth, and I'm gonna go like this. The um, the sugar is not bad, I guess. The sugar is not bad. He can rest one of their units and then we can bring it back and also the pudding we can bring it back after. So we'll go here. The soul is probably gonna die here. What is still has seven? Well, I guess I'm not gonna let you kill it that easily. Give me the attack. Yeah, they, they wanna play big mom, right? They wanna play big mom here. So they wanna play their big mom. I don't know that we need another sugar, but I also don't wanna get rid of it. Yeah, so it's gonna be big mom here. We're gonna Grant them or trash our life? Because then they're going to start playing their tank cost. We know they're going to heal here. We know they have triggers here. I have to just somehow get back to this, right? Yeah, somehow. Okay, so we can have sugar to rest something, right? But this is also doing the same trick. Yeah, whatever. We'll go here. I should I should I should have trashed my own life. Because now I get and now I give them an extra life gives me so much value. I still losing to Thunderbolt, I still losing to Nami, I still losing to a million things. Okay, Amaru. Wait a second.
Somehow I have to get enough damage through. I want to get this restand, right? So this is the one that we probably want to get back. We don't want to give them the Sanji. So we can attack for seven. Bring back the sugar. And attack for eight, I guess. Yeah, I mean, we know they have a trigger here that they haven't shown us because they left it at the top of their life earlier. Whatever it is, they can play it and they still choose not to. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Do we attack with the Sanji? I feel like the Sanji is so important, but I also want to get rid of this Okiku right now. Let's go here. Let's let them heal. This is still going to be a five. Opponent only has two attacks. So they have to choose which one of these three units to kill. We have enough counters that we should be okay. We have another Seth, right? It has to be like a Yamato, right? This could be a Yamato that the opponent is playing. Let's force him to put down on the on this, right? If this is a Yamato, they can kill any unit. But I want them to do more. You have to kill this, right? Yeah, you kill it. Cool. We play second. Like, the Seth is the one that kind of puts you in a bad position. Uh, Karakuri is a problem because he can bounce back the Sorrow. Yep, and without the Sorrow, things can get a little bit complicated as well. So, now, the good thing here is that this Sanji can definitely kill this Big Mom. The problem is that Netsu will start having this tank cost, right? So, this is going to be... We can go 7 to leader. So, we can go 7 to leader. What is it? Alright, so... 7 to leader, play Seth. Oh, we need to bounce something back. I guess we cannot kill this, huh? Yeah, we cannot kill this. I think we just go aggro. We just go aggro here. So we can go 6 to their leader. We stand this guy, attack for nine. And uh, yeah, the opponent's gonna have the 10 cost, and we just gotta hope that we can find enough value to get there. Other option is that we can just let this stay, right? The opponent's gonna play 10 cost though, which when they play the 10 cost, we don't have enough to counter out, is the problem. I think we need to have this Seth, all right? I think we need to have this Seth. So I think we go for the nine, and we just rely on the Seth finding us the answer. There's a Sanji. I kind of don't want that Sanji to come down rested, though. Like, I think we just play the Sanji as it is and just play the Rosinante rested. And then the Pudding. Yeah. The idea is that we still have this double attack, I guess, at least with the Seth. So they go Tank House, Big Mom here. They still have a 5, an 8, and an 8. So the 8s can kill this because it's only at 7. We just need to pull more units on the board. We just need to pull more units on the board and, see, and hope that that's enough. Um, we'll take... We'll block the 5. We'll take the 8. We'll take the 8. Yeah, so we'll take this one. Just play your big mom. I know you have it. Yeah, we'll block this five. We can hide behind the blockers, right? So we can hide behind the blockers. Yeah, that's the big mom, right? So we can go Sanji here. So Sanji's two. Seth can attack for seven, six, and that leaves me with five down. 
which means that we can play Duval and I still have three done left over. So because we have those three done left over, it's probably better for me to just attack with, like I said, so we go here, right? We go seven. Oh, wait, we have to bounce something back, right? So yeah, we deploy this one. I guess we can just bounce back the Rosinante. If we bounce the Rosinante back, we need four down to play them out. And four, okay, okay, okay. I see, I see the game. I see the game plan. We hide behind the blockers. We hide behind the blockers so that we don't die. And we still have sugar to rest any of the opponent's blockers. So. Seven, two, two, two. We develop two blockers and the Sanji. All right. So we attack for two, 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 two. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I see, I see the game plan. I see the game plan. As long as the opponent doesn't get a trigger, that is, right? Yeah, we can get this back to our hand, by the way. We, we want to get it back to our hand because we know that the opponent... Yeah, we know that the opponent's going to be able to uh, to kill that with the pudding, right? Uh, so here, it doesn't matter. I guess it does because we want to potentially get this guy's back. Yeah, sure. And then we jumped on the Sanji. So we can... we can. This is going to die. We can block, block, and Sanji. I guess if the opponent has a Maru or Reject, we just lose anyways. I don't think I'm playing against any of those. When it has 12, 8, 8, and like, yeah, they, they, they can kill us very easily. So if they have a way to get rid of the blockers, they just win the game. Gedatsu can get kill them. But the opponent threw away a Gedatsu. So Gedatsu can kill them because they're two health, uh, two costs. We beat their blocker because of the sugar. The opponent knows we have a sorrow in the bottom of our life, which is a non-counter car. There's the Amaru. And they just win, right? Yeah, they just win. Yeah, again, if they had the way to remove it, they have the way to remove it. They also have the rejet, so they have both. They have both ways to remove it, unfortunately. And there was no way for us. It, it all came down to that one turn. That one turn, they also had to get that too. That one turn where I gave myself, I gave them the life, I should have just trashed my own life. So, hey, welcome back, everyone. Hope you enjoyed those games of Soro Sanji versus Kakuri. We got to put a lot of pressure. We still got to lose one game there, unfortunately. But the other two games, you kind of got to see how much pressure you can put in and how impactful those double attacks can be and be able to cheat out those two cost units, too, right? So, so it's kind of nice. It feels decent. Again, there's a lot of combos there that I'm still getting to get used to. Uh, but honestly, I, I like it. I like it. It's fun when you can get it to work off. It's just very inconsistent. Very, very inconsistent, unfortunately. So hope you enjoy those games. We have two more videos coming out in the next two days with this leader. So hope you stick around with that. Uh, for that, if you like our content, make sure to like it below and subscribe to us. We post One Piece videos every single day. Enjoy your day.